then I just wanted to move on quickly to this Andrew Yang New York Times interview that again one of the viewers commented last time secret janitor thank you for sharing this link so Sam this is brilliant and I'm surprised so the New York Times kind of had this interview of Andrew Yang in December 2019 where it's Andrew Yang with 10 11 New York Times reporters all sitting around like a a round table, you know, one of these conference oh, tables. Oh, yeah, the, the ones they did with presidential uh, yeah. uh, candidates. Yeah, yeah, the one that Bernie said, if it's your birthday, I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to tell you. It's happy birthday. <laughs> I'm not going to give. Uh, it was the best. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, I don't yeah. remember that one. So it was that, but it was a good thing to get and uh, to get to know Andrew Yang. The reporters were kind of semi-annoying. I mean, this one lady who was asking some of the questions, she seemed very nervous. I don't understand why. This other guy took a bit of a more confrontational approach, but it was okay. He was asking questions. Fair enough. But yeah, it was very nicely filmed and everything. I just loved it. But then just like Secret Janitor pointed out, for some reason, they didn't post it on their YouTube channel or anywhere on YouTube. Really weird. So the interview is just embedded and within this really nice like New York Times style long form article. So trying to drive traffic to their own website. Yeah something like that but yeah andrew yang i'm pretty much to talk about everything and anything so i just point out just have one or two things um that i want to share and anybody who wants to get to know andrew yang more i think this is a this is a good video where he talks about everything and really where he's worked and how why he's reached the kind of conclusions that he's reached about the state of the economy here's one really nice quote that i pulled out from him so talking about ubi a bit and the state of the economy, he said, if you can't pay next month's rent, it is very hard to worry about climate change. I personally cannot uh, disagree with him more. much there. And then again, um, his analysis I found, just like I mentioned earlier on, was is different than why he reaches the positions that he have. You know, he doesn't talk in like the typical leftist kind of way. You know, he has different experiences. So, uh, so I found that to be very interesting. He said something beautiful about the markets. So they started talking. So, so one of the journalists asked them, so yeah, so you think the market is failing then? That's why you think there needs to be UBI and all this. And he said, no, the, the market is doing beautifully. Markets are designed to maximize profits. They are not designed to maximize human well-being. And that is exactly what they're doing. And then he refers to, you know, you see how much more money is being made now. It's surpassing productivity, of course, with financialization. I, I, I would replace the word market with businesses, but yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was great. He talks about VAT. So, you know, some people ask, how would you pay for your uh, $1,000 a month? So he says a VAT, which is pretty much a value-added tax. Really? I didn't know that. That's yeah. not good. And I'm then they counter happy. him. Yeah, they counter him with saying that, you know, that's not a very progressive, um, that's not progressive taxation. That's kind of regressive. And then he comes back and he says that, but listen, it doesn't have to be on everything. On essentials, it shouldn't be the case, but maybe on AI and this and that, then you would have a higher added value added tax. So, you know, of course, um, he countered with that. And he said, yes, I understand. But at the same time, Americans will be getting much more than they are being charged through this value added tax with the thousand dollars that I will be providing. And he again clarifies that he doesn't want any programs like food stamps or these things being reduced. If people need more on top of the UBI, he doesn't oppose that. He said one thing that was a bit weird. I didn't he didn't elaborate on it more. So this was pre-election. So maybe you have to put in that context. But if I'm not mistaken, he said that Russian hacking is one of the biggest threats to democ to U.S. democracy and the election uh, coming up. But yeah, besides that, he just talked about, you know, even all kinds of things really shows the diversity of his programs and policies going as even talking about local funding for journalism. He says if if journalist institutions weren't being judged like a profit maximization company and being looked at in that way, he says that he thinks they're not in such a bad shape. And, you know, if there was a different approach to him, you know, just thinking of how you can help small journalist organization, and all that to kind of break even and think about it that way, then you will see perhaps it's not as bad as it is. And finally, this is, I think, really how he differentiates himself. 
They ask him who else you think understands the internet the way that you do. And he thinks about it a bit and he says, I don't have any confidence that my opponents understand the internet. And I think compared to the knowledge and understanding that he would have given his past experiences, his age, his interests, uh, and yeah, all I that. Think, yeah, but... I mean, he's comparing himself yeah. to Trump, Biden, yeah. and <laughs> yeah, yeah, that no, no, mayor, thing, and, you know, these I kind of say, chaps. He's like, a, you know, he's like a well-trained martial artist, <laughs> while uh, Trump is somebody who... I don't know. He, there's no way for him to understand the internet, but he somehow understood it better than anyone. <laughs> well, so he understood you know, communication that, yeah. better than yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah true. What we was wild card. Yeah. No, I mean, you, it's all yeah. Trump's communication skills. He understands. He had a good understanding over that yeah. for sure. More than a good understanding, um, really, especially in the yeah. beginning, if you think about it. Yeah, he's uh, he's good at reading a room. But yeah, thank you to Secret Janitor for having shared that article. I really enjoyed it. And now we're, uh, and I learned a lot about Andrew Yang. And now we're just going to move on to just the other comments that people left, just really thanking them and see if there's anything that uh, we want to, that we want to elaborate on. So Sam, I'm just going to go through them the way they're so.